Alright guys, a bit of an unusual video today. We're uh, having a bit of a interview and a kind of a um, blaster spotlight. This was a video that I was hoping to be able to make at End War, but because of scheduling and because it was just a chaotic, not a mess, but very, very, very busy, much more than I expected, I didn't have a chance to actually uh, talk to... Uh, this is Searing Phoenix with his Huggins Claw. Who, is that uh, pronounced Hugen. correct? Hugen? It's pronounced Hugen. Yeah, Hugen's Claw. If you want to be really Norse about it, it's Hugen. All righty. Um, but I did see this thing in person, and it is spectacular. Like, the pictures do not do it justice. Um, it is, as you can see, a Raven integration, but I believe it would be more appropriate for you to introduce it yourself. So if you'd like to just do a brief overview on the blaster itself, then uh, mm -hmm. we'll go from there and then roll into the build blog afterwards. So, Yeah, so Hugin's Claw was kind of... Um... I, it was kind of born out of, uh, I wanted to bring something new to End War 2018. I, like, I had the idea of, let's bring some, let's have an End War 2018 project. That'll be cool. Now, I have my other primary Eidolon, um, which is great and fantastic, but I have found over time that I really just like using Ravens. Um, something about the way that the ergonomics fit for me, even stock Ravens are really pretty comfortable for me. Um, and I really just like the overall form factor and, and the bullpup reloading isn't a big deal for me. I'm fine with it. Um, and so I thought, you know, I had this idea that I wanted to make a, a bullpup based on a Raven. And it was, while I was theory crafting this, this was right around the time that Hawkeye was working on Glass Construct. And so I saw this back end of Glass Construct, which is Glass Construct, if, if you aren't familiar with it, is a build by Hawkeye 007. And it's a Raven... Zeus Raven Rapid Strike um, that is a beautiful project in and of itself. Go look at it. But um, I really liked, I, 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 you know, as I was looking at him working on it, I said, wow, I, I think I could do really cool things with just the, the Raven and the Zeus and use the Zeus because then I realized, one of the things I realized is if I put a Zeus onto the back of a Raven, uh, I could do the same thing Hawkeye did, which is put the battery tray into the Zeus, because there's plenty of room there. And then and then I I don't need well I could I could use the Raven and battery tray for LEDs. Or I could just not have LEDs at all and I could just completely remove the Raven battery tray. Mm -hmm. What if I just go nuts and do that? And so I that that's basically where it started is I can make a Zeus on the back end of a Raven and then have this really streamlined blaster that doesn't have the big swell of the battery tray from the Raven. And I get this nice compact blaster that I really like the size of and works well for me. And that'd be cool. And no one's really done that. Let's sure we'll go for it. And, and so then the project started. And then because I work full time, it took many, many evenings and weekends <laughs> of slow progress to finally get to the place that it was and it's it went through a lot of iteration um to get there there were a lot of things that were thought for this build that we'll, we'll i'm sure we'll discuss as we go through the build log and and i'll go through all of them and then eventually it actually is overall technically like it's actually a very mundane build internally it's running uh fang revamped with hooligan flywheels in an ofp cage on two uh, on two S lipo, so there's like nothing fancy about it internally. Um, not that there weren't plans to do fancy things internally, they just didn't pan out. So I think part of this, it'll be interesting to talk through this process and kind of talk about all of the ways that I wanted to do things and then <laughs> ended up deciding not to do things. Um, and that'll be that'll be interesting to discuss. So. All right, first picture: you have a raven and a Zeus, and the things escalated <laughs> yeah. from there. <laughs> yeah, things that's flavor. I think so. So amusingly, most of these pictures are um, lifted. So, so I kept pretty quiet about this project for quite a long time because I wasn't sure. I didn't want to have a project that I was like, I'm bringing this to end war, and then end up not being able to bring it to end war and being disappointed. Yeah, and I believe you hinted so, that you hinted this build at me pretty early on. I believe. Yeah, and then you're really quiet for a long time. <laughs> I was pretty selective about who I told. Um, I don't think I even posted much about it until I posted like 
my family photo of what I was bringing to end war. And people were like, wait, what's that? And I think I, <laughs> actually, I think if you were, if you watch some of Hawkeye's channels because there are some of Hawkeye's streams, I think it, it popped up once or twice early there. But other than that, it was pretty quiet. Um, in any case, it started. So, so most of these images are lifted from, uh, stuff I would send Hawkeye over Discord because he was one of the people that knew from the beginning because I talked to him about it and, and talked through some of the technical details early on and I was like, okay, integrating a Zeus and a Raven, how how much of a pain in the ass was it? Yeah. And you know, and like what what technical challenges did you face while you were trying to do it? And when he was like, I mean it was an integration, I was like, okay, cool. We can do that. Um so, Which is always nice to have uh, kind of a heads up from somebody who's done it, just so if there's yes, any pitfalls yes. that right out of the gate, you don't make the same mistakes. So, and 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 I think it, it, if I were to take a takeaway from that, don't be afraid to not be first on something. Like you, you, people want to say that you've done like Stravens have been done to death. Yeah. Right. And and Stravens were done to death. And then you showed up and were like, hey, what if we do these cut lines differently? And everyone's brain exploded. And I could <laughs> I could tell a story. I could I could segue into the story about Eidolon, which was, um, if if I want to segue to that, uh, Eidolon was almost ready for paint. I had a fully integrated Straven shell, ready for paint. Like it was sanded. I was about to like I I had vinyl dye on the shelf like ready to go to paint the internals and like all the paint ready for it and then this jackass named mr nathan shows up and posts like hey what if we do the screen differently and i go oh you've got to be kidding me i don't i don't know I, that that doing it that way is so much better and i don't i don't know i don't know if i can oh man i'm gonna be and, and amusingly, I was talking with Hawkeye about this again, and it's like two in the morning. He's like, no, you have to you have to redo it, because if you do it any other way, you're going to be upset with yourself every <laughs> single time you look at it. So I ended up shelving a, like dozens of hours of integration work and redoing it with your cut lines. And it was because you looked at something that other people had done and thought about it. And so don't, I would say, if you're looking at trying to do, especially with like Urge to Merge, Merge Masters coming up, like don't feel that just because you're not doing something new doesn't mean there isn't room to do it differently that is that is an improvement or better in some way that you want to do it case in point there's a post on reddit about a guy who did a hyper uh, uh, a rapid strike raven bullpup integration and the way he like wrapped the handle around i was like huh yeah that's cool and new and turok did his first bullpup rapid strike like easily what two or three years ago yeah it's been a, like, been a long time yeah you can make improvements so that would be the first thing if you're watching this and you want to like get into integrations don't be afraid to like go back to the drawing board a little bit with something that's already been done and and do it a little differently and see how it works i think that there's always growth opportunity well that's the so, thing yeah. so, so often so often people are, are wanting to do first you know I, I had my first video yeah. so often people are wanting to you know plow new ground and and you know which, which is good, but we have, awesome. we have so much yeah. stuff that has been done that can be done better. We have so much that, you know, potential yet to be, yet to be yeah. found with the existing, existing stuff. So yeah, never be afraid yeah. to revisit something old with a new spin. Yeah. So anyways, most of these pictures are from me sending Hawkeye, you know, bouncing ideas off of him and being like, I don't know what I think about this. But anyway, so this was my first like teaser photo to him. Where, because he, I was on the fence about doing this whole project, yeah. and I sent him the photo and was like, "Well, this is happening." <laughs> uh, and so I, like, the first photo I sent him was that first photo there of them like sitting on the table, like ready to be taken apart. And then, like, literally the next photo I send him is like the second photo of the battery tray and the back end of the Raven <laughs> is completely hacked off. And I'm like, uh, "Too late to turn I back." Know, like, I, I have no idea if I'm doing this right, but uh, <laughs> I've destroyed a raven. At the very least, I've killed a raven. <laughs> so that's progress. Um, and then, and then the, the next photo is, of course, all the parts. Like I, I hacked up the parts into what I thought would be the reasonable, you know, uh, things that would uh, that would kind of be the parts as they would hack together. And uh, 
and was like, well, we're going to turn this into a blaster. Um, and and the, the, the next image is actually a little out of order. That's of the battery tray slowly being cut down. Um, turns out it's actually really tricky to, to cut off a battery tray for a Raven because the inside of the battery tray is the side of your magwell. Um, yeah. You, so if you, yeah. if you cut that off and you don't let it, if, if you don't keep it true long enough to reinforce it so that it can stay where it is, you lose your tolerance for your magwell and your magwell will probably, fortunately I didn't do this on my blaster, but your magwell will probably collapse in some horrible way. Which and, uh, the Raven magwell no. is already notorious for having issues anyway, so. <laughs> yup. 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 I don't know if they fixed that. I know, I can't remember if they fixed that with the Raven fire. I don't know if they I've did heard, anything with the shell. I've heard the Elite was better than the original Raven, but I don't know to what degree, and so, yeah. Yeah. Nobody's um, been complaining as much, so maybe they made a few corrections. It's hard to say. Or maybe people are using Ravens less. That and, could very well know, be, too. <laughs> hashtag Strife Master Race or whatever. Um, but anyways, so that was... So there, there's a couple of photos of, like, the Magwell getting cut apart. It's, it's kind of a bear to get off, but I, I, I did manage it. But I would say... If you want to repeat this mod, um, one of the pictures is of me reinforcing the magwell with epoxy putty as I'm cutting it out, and I would strongly recommend doing that so that you don't lose that tolerance. Okay, and that's what that white um, stuff is. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's that's actual like epoxy putty, not epoxy sculpt. That's epoxy putty because it's structural. Hmm. Um, you'll see I use epoxy putty whenever there's something that needs to be structural because it's a stronger. The the way I like to say it is epoxy putty is a tool. Epoxy sculpt is a crafting supply. Yeah. So yeah. epoxy putty mechanical is versus a tool. aesthetics, essentially. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't sand very well, but holy crap, it sets in five minutes <laughs> and it and it bonds stuff like nobody's business. So you know when I want to hold and hold this flimsy, you know, this magwell has become flimsy because I've cut eighty percent of its yeah. structure out, 90 percent. So I reinforce that structure with epoxy or epoxy putty well so i don't lose that tolerance on the side um and then and then i started kind of theory crafting with okay well what do i want how do i want to do this shell and i tried to emulate what you had done with the straven before with trying to wrap as much of the zeus around the shell as possible and i like um, so this that's where you see that that picture with the zeus parts cut apart i kind of cut them where I thought I could, where I thought I would have to cut them, specifically over the motor, the motor housing on yeah. the Raven. I knew I would have to cut the Zeus shell there, so I did it. But I was trying to be really cautious about only cutting when I knew I absolutely had to cut things, because I wanted to try and wrap the shell of the Zeus. The original idea was to wrap the shell of the Zeus around the Raven, much like you wrap the shell of the Raven around the, of the Strife when you do a Strafe, uh, a Straven integration nowadays. Yeah. With you know, like Mr. Nathan style, where you're trying to, <laughs> like, actually, like, your one blaster is trying to give the other one a hug. Oh, that's um, nice. And I, I really yeah, like, the, I really like the look of this. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm on the picture here where you have the, the Zeus overlay, and there's a lot of yeah. potential there. I kind of like the boxier look it gives. Like, I think, I think if yeah. you took off the rail and, and brought it down a ways like you did uh, normally, but I, I, I like the, the boxy Zeus body on there. Like, I, I, I would be tempted to replicate this if uh, if I happen to have a Zeus and a Raven on the bench at the same time, and things might happen. But yeah. um, no, I, I really yeah. like this look, and I think I think you could run with this and just go with because like your um, your Hugens claw, claw, the the final form is a lot very smooth and, and just very sleek. I think you could get away with a nice kind of a boxy, more aggressive look with the. You could, yeah, the, the, kind of like more like how they when you integrate a strife into a centurion, and you if you want to really keep the centurion lines going all the way forward, that's almost that's almost a similar kind of thing here. Where yeah, you'd have the Zeus lines coming all the way forward through you know through the entire to the from from the back to the front, you would yeah. have a Zeus line, nice you know, continuity lines of Zeus coming through. Yeah, yeah, and and I think you could definitely do it. Um, I think. The the part where I, I kind of abandoned it was um, when when I think the the battery door side I just couldn't find a good way to like I wasn't happy with the way it was wrapping around and maybe I didn't want the boxy nature like the boxy look I think there would have been a way to do it and I think if you wanted to do it you could but I think I moved away from it because I wanted other aesthetics and if you keep going you can see where I started to 
you know, pull most of the Zeus pieces away. And amusingly, like this, this build started out where I wanted to have like a really good, like probably 50, 50 mix of Zeus and Raven parts. And yeah. it, it, it turned out to like the only parts of the Zeus I ended up using was the butt stock. Which is always um, funny how, how projects develop like that, where you have an image yeah. in your head and then they kind of take on a life of their own and they say, you know, that was a good idea, but... Right, and, and that would be another takeaway if you're, if you're watching this and looking for things to take away from this discussion as, you know, trying to become a, a you know, trying to think about shell modification and, and integration work more. is like, have an idea in your head, but, and, and if you really want to do something, you'll find a way to do it, but there are times when you just kind of have to approach a project with a somewhat open mind and say, you know what, um, I'm going to let the project kind of tell me when I need to do something and when my desire to do something override, you know, like there are times when you can say, I'm going to make this happen. And then there are times when you have to direct something, I think. And, and Hugen Spa is very much a case where the project directed me rather than me trying to enforce my will upon, yeah. <laughs> upon the project. And that's kind of how, um, how the Jackal project is, has been with me, is, is yeah. that I had kind of an image in my head, and then as pieces kind of came together, it was like, well, this is, there's obviously, you know, it's like another another pair of hands come in and, and kind of take control of stuff, and you're just kind of there, you know, ma yeah, making Yeah, you're kind of observing, and you're like, okay, well, what's going to, what's functionally going to work here? And, yeah. and I think when I started this project, I actually tried to, like, I tried to sit down and be like, okay. I did. I, I followed. I followed your footsteps with with Eidolon and really liked it and did a whole bunch of stuff that I feel like I did great and I borrowed stuff from you and I iterated on it. Cool. And and this this project was, I knew I was kind of breaking new ground. I hadn't, you know, most people hadn't done Zeus Raven integration, so I was like, hey, I'm kind of doing something new here. But I also wanted to take the approach of watching from watching like your Jackal videos and and your some of your videos like. I wanted to try and take that approach that you take where I'm like, okay, I'm going to think like Mr. Nathan in a certain way, and, but kind of not really go in saying, I want it to happen this way. Say, I want something like this and then yeah. kind of letting the project kind of evolve. And that's, and that's what we see as these pictures go through. You'll see a lot of evolution. So we see, you know, we can, we can blow through a couple more photos here. You can, you know, you see, okay, well, I removed a lot of these pieces. Okay. Well now I removed almost all of these pieces and I have some Centurion in there. Um, and, and then I go, okay, well, how am I going to cover this huge gap from the Zeus stock that, um, that, that gets left because the Zeus has the magazine come all the way back. And so I've got yeah. this big void here. How am I going to cover this? And then I went, oh, rough cut pieces. <laughs> They'll fit great. Which that, I think that I think that big void is what would keep a lot of people from doing Zeus integrations because you have kind of like a just a horseshoe on the back and then this big giant gap. But yeah, that's yeah. that the, the rough cut is such a perfect size just for that and has just I was enough contour. Astounded at how well it's like perfect. Like it's not even close. It's like perfect, um, it, astonishingly so. Um, so I will say, um, so so it was about at this point that. I made a decision on how I wanted Hugens Claw to work. And at this point, I made the decision that the goal for whether or not, the determining factor for whether or not I should put a piece, an integration, like integrate more shell pieces, was I wanted no, none of the original seams of the integration or any of the pieces to have any abrupt change. I wanted as few abrupt changes as possible. I wanted to patch over every single like like if there was a if there was a if there was a a line that was an abrupt change, I wanted to find a way to make it so that line was continuous and flowed from somewhere, didn't just and didn't just stop. So that was kind of where I was like, okay, I need I need a piece that will come all the way from the back of the Zeus all the way to the front and either come up into the Raven, you know, towards following the line of, yeah. of the, the Raven on the battery door side where it has the, the front bulge, you know, where it comes up on the angle. Yeah. You know, I either need to bring it up into that line or I need to bring it across and have it come down into the hand. But like I, I needed to find a way to make those lines flow instead of just stop it. Which I think um, is... And that's what I... And that's what I realized was the biggest difference between like old school 
stray bins like the coop cut lines that coop did you know the first stray bin you just cut it straight and stuck yeah. them together and it worked it functionally worked the biggest difference between those cut lines and your cut lines where you basically said i'm not going to have any of those abrupt transitions where i don't absolutely have to have them yeah and and i think that's kind of what the big jump we made in the last few years mm -hmm. with integrations was we, we stopped cutting a straight line of i need this stock cut a straight line and you know cut yeah. the straight line here yeah. and just stick them together of doing yeah. more uh, wrapping and stuff like what you have here where you have lines overlapping yeah. and, and layers and stuff like that which which really yeah. I, I don't know I, I guess really brings everything to a the, the new level that we have because okay. Which I, I, I will say, I think it was Merge Masters 1. I think Merge Masters 1 is what made people, everybody, like the, the be, being a moderator of Armour and, and for as much crap as we're getting, currently we're getting a bunch of crap for not being, you know, having the, the greatest content, which I could have a whole half hour conversation on what I feel <laughs> about that. But, um, you know, like Merge Masters 1 was like awesome. Merge Masters so 1 cool really covered some new ground. That was some yeah. really incredible stuff we had. So many people had. came out of the woodwork, yourself included, and were basically like, hey, what if we did it this way? And the the positive feedback loop that came out of Merge Masters 1, like during it, like during the, the ramp up and like when people were really trying to produce and get stuff yeah. done and then the, and then the voting and the, the, the ensuing, you know, um, discussion and stuff that it that it spawned it's such was, a cool it, thing to be a part of awesome yeah it was super awesome and and the funniest part is like i remember when i was like what's this hellhound thing i was <laughs> like oh crap and i think actually merge masters one was kind of what pushed me i think that might have coincided with me like scrapping eidolon and redoing it it was so right was about like, the same oh, time i think crap because huh I, I i believe that's right about the same time mm -hmm. That sounds about right. It's, I mean, it's been like, what, two two years now? But, yeah. So continuing on um, to give some more structural support. So I put the the rapid stri or the, the rough cut parts in to really kind of solidify. And I was super happy. Like, I was like, I found this part. And it's like, there's a really good feeling when you mm -hmm. find, like, the, the, the perfect part for an integration. You're like, that is what is needed there. And it you don't even have to, like, try and think about how to get it in there. It's just like, yep, that's how it's going to work. And you just DevCon that baby in. And you're like, hey, that, that worked out great. Uh, uh, so then I then I said, okay, well, I've laid all this out. I know what I want to do on the back end. So I, um, there's, a, there's an ABS sheet that reinforces the Magwell again. And then um, a little bit of work on the... Uh, the Zeus battery door actually has a Strife battery cover hacked off and put into it. And then I, uh, you can't really see it on the pictures because I don't, I don't think I take a picture of it at all. But um, I, I dremeled two little notches into the back of the, uh, under the bottom of where the Zeus battery cap sits. Oh, nice. And so the Zeus battery cap just sits right in there. And that's, that's taken from Glass Construct. Hawkeye did a similar kind of setup. Okay. But it was super easy. I just slotted slotted the Zeus battery cap with a Dremel, and then basically just cut the the Strife battery door to size and just shoved it in there. <laughs> and then it 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 still didn't stay too well. Um, I ended up having to cut two little notches in the top of the of the Zeus battery cap, and and stick in little strips of ABS plastic that stuck out and gave two more little notches on the top. So there's actually four little notches ah. that hold the Zeus battery cap onto the Zeus, um, along with um, some magnets just to give it a little bit more positive retention so you know yeah. when it's seated. Um, but yeah, that, that battery cap comes off with no tools. It's cool. just, you, you just pop it off. Uh, works great, actually. I'm looking at this um, where you use the, uh, the ABS sheet in the Raven yeah. battery compartment. Where uh, where did you get that ABS sheet? Because I've been using styrene because I've just had it around, but I want to move up to use an ABS because it's a little more structural for stuff like I, this. Yeah. Um, I want to say I just searched ABS sheet on Amazon and got like a pack of 12. Oh. I, it was like a pack of 10 or 12, 12 inch by 12 inch, like one foot square thin ABS sheet. And it was like 10 bucks. And I bought it once, and I've had a stash oh, of them in my stuff, like, ever since. And I just cut slices off of it. Yeah. 
Well, I'm definitely going to have to look into that. Yeah, I just I just searched on Amazon. Not, you know, yeah. So you can just, I'm pretty sure I just searched it on Amazon. It was like, I need thin ABS sheet. And so <laughs> the, the only trick is you'll get it in like fractions of an inch, you know, so it'll be like 0.9, you know, 0. 0.06 inch sheet. And you have to do like the, the like, what okay, the what thickness. does 0. 0.06 of an inch mean? <laughs> Um, uh, very good, very good. But but yeah, you can just buy that off of buy that off. I bought it off of Amazon. Perfect. Yep. So cool. continuing on, I fixed the the um, rough cut pieces and then patched the. They're actually upside down, so the the screw holes were on um, one side, and so I patched them with um, epoxy putty and epoxy sculpt and, and got them smoothed out. And then we come to the front end, which was actually one of the hardest, one of the harder pieces. The, the top front piece was one of the hardest things I had to figure out how to do. Um, I went back and forth on how to do it. You can see there's a picture of me holding up like a chunk of the Alpha Hawk. I was originally going to use that chunk of the Alpha Hawk. And which would have looked all right. Which would have looked fine. Yeah. And, then, and then I was like, okay, well, I know... At that point, I knew I was going to use, I said, okay, it's at this point, no, the reason I had to do that was because I made the decision to chop off the front. So, so the first decision that, that forced this was, do I chop off the, the front rail and just leave the, the motor housing of the front, you know, the, the motor housing as sticking up and do I chop off the tack rail from there forward yeah and obviously i decided to um that's a satisfying then, decision i've done it twice now and i like it both times <laughs> yeah i really like it and if you have i'm i'm really tempted um if i ever do like a, another integration with a raven where the raven isn't a functional part i'm actually strongly considering just flat topping the whole thing and mm. cutting even the the motor housing off so it's just completely flat, flat. yeah um I might consider doing that in the future. The only thing that was that was surprising is just how wide. When you cut off that section, you you actually finally realize just how wide the front chunk of the Raven is, <laughs> and the the front of the Raven is actually surprisingly wide. Um, and so I went, okay, well, how am I gonna how am I gonna build this up? Because everything I was looking at was, was too narrow, and I would have had to like patch with epoxy putty or epoxy sculpt. Yeah. And, you know, it would have been a kind of a patch job. And so I, I arrived on the idea that I had to do something to narrow the gap first before I could cap something on top of it. Um, so there's two pieces of an alpha hawk that I used. I used the top. Um, so the picture where I've got the alpha hawk um, superimposed over the top of it, there's actually the little rails on the very, very top. I used those and I cut those free and I glued those on, and I didn't know what I was going to do on top of those when I glued them on, but I, was, I knew that I was going to use those pieces of the Alpha Hawk to make the gap that existed on the Raven narrower. Um, and, and this is another case where the, the project told me something had to happen, right? I was like, yeah. I, I need to narrow this gap. This is too wide to put anything else functional. Like, anything I put here when this gap is this wide is going to look awful. So I knew I had to narrow it. So I used one piece of the Alpha Hawk to do that. And then I started tinkering around with what else could I put on top there. And I ended up using the underside of the Alpha Hawk barrel. You can actually see it in the Alpha Hawk where I've got the Alpha Hawk held up. You can see the front part. That's actually the hand grip underneath the, okay. the turret got okay. flipped upside down. So it actually has, there's one screw on, on Hugan's claw that's on the wrong side of the blaster. And that's because the Elf Hawk got flipped upside down. And I needed that screw to hold that whole piece together. So I was like, well, I've got one screw on the other side of the blaster. What am I going to do? Like, what do I do? Whatever. Yeah. Um, that's actually, I, uh, found... I, I hadn't, uh, I, of course, I don't have an Alpha Hawk, so I'm not as familiar with the shell yeah. itself. But uh, yeah, I kind of wondered, you said it was Alpha Hawk parts, but I couldn't really identify it. But now it's... It's, it's the one, it's the one that, that, that turns a lot of people around it because it's upside down. And so people yeah. don't see it as an Alpha Hawk because you aren't used to seeing an Alpha Hawk upside down. Well, it, it's the Alpha Hawk <laughs> bottom part on top yeah. of the Alpha Hawk top part. Yes. So, so you can yes. you can have like two opposite ends of the same blaster on top yes. of each other. On So it's like, man, that is... With, that with was... The, with, 
and then and then I was like, okay, well that works really well for the front part, but now I have this little gap between where that alpha hawk part naturally ends and where the where the start of the motor housing is. Um, and so I plugged that piece with a, a part of a hyperfire. Is that little little ridged piece on the back there is is hyperfire, which that's right um, behind the pusher, right? If I remember uh, right, I want to say yes. Uh, yeah. I'm going to have to, I'm, you're making me Google hyperfire now. So ah. I actually looked at a picture of a hyperfire, <laughs> which is fine. Um, yeah, it's right behind the, it's right on top of the, right above the trigger. Yeah. That, that's good. It just right came out trigger. so subtle right there. Yeah. That's, there's a lot of little, um, I think I, I want to say I like told myself that I'd be okay if I exiled the crap out of this blaster and like <laughs> ended up like cutting tiny little pieces of blasters apart and like, just like stuck. You know, I was like, if I end up, I had a hyperfire that I used for a hyperfire rapid strike integration. And so I had the front end of a hyperfire just lying around. Uh -huh. And I don't like the hyperfire because it doesn't have push, <laughs> it doesn't have pusher control. Yeah. Because it's a conveyor belt. And so I'm like, I'm never using a hyperfire as an actual like functional part of the blaster. So I had no problem like cutting an entire hyperfire up that I was never going to use for one little piece. Yeah, for, for um, about an inch and a half of, now, of plastic. Yeah. Um, well, there is a second hyperfire piece on this blaster. And oh, it's actually right. In, it's in it's in the image with the alpha hawk part and the hyperfire part put on, and it's the the little knob, the round knob, um, gets put to plug one of the holes between the the Raven body and the Zeus body. Right at the bottom, I use the little cylinder piece from the hyperfire um, that is right behind the little wiggledy part so on the hyperfire there's the little wiggledy part right above the trigger and then right behind that there's this little round piece and i cut both of those pieces off and stuck them on up and we used them as essentially as like plugs but to just plug up little holes but it works like this the subtle little button thing to go in front of the yeah. little sling mount it's one of those things that in the finished product you don't really notice it like when i was first when you first showed me pictures i was like i don't remember the zeus looking like that i had to actually go out and, and look at my zeus because it looked correct but yeah, it, it didn't. Yeah. It, my, my memory well, was like, I don't think that's correct. And, and, but and I think after I did that, I saw you on another Strife project did this really clever thing where you put the 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 hooks from the the front of a Strife, like you know the, the or not the Strife, the Raven. How the Raven has those little hooks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Prongs, and you like flip that part upside down and glued it on the back there. I was like, oh, that's slick. That might have worked there too. Um, but I do like that also, little, that little thing. Also coming to the party at this point is a bit of rapid strike. Um, yes. I use some rapid strike below the rough cut pieces to, to bridge that gap. Again, going with the idea that there should be no abrupt transitions. If there's an abrupt transition, I need to put some part of a blaster over the top of this to make that transition smooth and, and seamless. Because the way I looked at it is if I've got two blaster pieces that I can cut and position and glue onto the shell, I can then glue them exactly where I want and then patch them with epoxy sculpt and sand it back and make it completely seamless. Yeah. Whereas if I have two seams, if I have a seam there, then I have to just put this bead of epoxy sculpt on and sand it down. And, and I don't have as much control over what the final product is going to look like if I'm going from like raw shell to a piece that's glued on top. So I wanted to try and make sure that like every transition got got bridged and then resolved in a good way. So, you mm -hmm. know, I, I basically like I took what, what that rapid strike part does is it takes the abrupt line. It takes the abrupt line of where the rough cut stops. And instead of having to just like cut it there and stop, I can I can bridge it with that right rapid strike piece and then do what I want with the rapid strike piece and cut the rapid strike piece and tweak it, whatever. And it also coincidentally covers the uh, mag release on the Zeus as well. Which is a huge bonus because that's another, there again on the Zeus, it, it's one of those areas you look at it and you're like, well, what the heck am I going to do with that hole? And right. especially I'm looking at the, the image here before you added the rapid strike bit, is that you mm -hmm. have the area right behind, like where the, the bottom of the raven stock starts because there's kind of this yep. hoop that goes over the little mag release area and then it kind of yep. sticks out and then it turns into the zeus and you have kind yep. of this complicated area that would yes. be hard to just yep. putty or whatever and so you resolved everything like three or four putty. issues all just adding that panel from the rapid strike which just not only corrects all those issues but yeah. but it, it, it looks the, good 
the, 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 an, the obvious answer is just cut up an entire rapid strike to get one little piece of it. No, actually, I think <laughs> I had a, I think I had a rapid strike that I had, I had, um, uh, cut the front off of for some reason. Oh, I had my rap. Yeah, that was actually from the same rapid strike hyperfire integration because ah. I, I rapid pistoled it. So I had the front end. That's from uh, the battery tray of a rapid strike. Mm -hmm. And actually, there's another there's another detail to that rapid strike. Um, I glued a piece, another sheet, uh, strip of ABS behind it because normally those are holes that are like they're totally through the plastic and I knew I didn't want to be able to see in there so I glued a sheet of ABS to the back of it ah. to, to make sure that you couldn't see through them but you still had the detail of having the little you know those little detail marks I didn't yeah. want to like just epoxy putty over them that would just be dumb um you know it, or it, it would look plain right I wanted to preserve yeah. those details and so I asked how can I preserve these details well I could if I can't see through them then they're just details and they'll just pick up color and that'll be fine yeah um and then we get to probably one of the one of the biggest decisions that I made about this project was what to do about the foregrip um the next major decision was what to do about the foregrip um and I like, I, I like this. Sure. Huh? I, I actually, you know, look at this hyperfire part. I yeah. really like the look of that. Yeah. Like, 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 really like I've got too. my brain cooking on this right now going, okay, yeah, I, uh, I got, I got some plans now. <laughs> right. Right. So, so there was, there was a little bit of the, where this came from is at this point I could shoulder the blaster, right? The blaster was DevCon together. I knew exactly how long and how it was going to feel. And like, I, I could, I, you know, shoulder it and bring it up and like look down the sights kind of thing. And yeah. Like I could, I could basically feel how it was going to feel to use at this point. The build was far enough along. Um, and what I found is that my front hand didn't know what to do. Um, <laughs> Um, and, and it's a problem with the Raven overall, right? It, the Raven overall, like your front hand either wraps really tight around the front end and has to like kind of ride up because there's almost no grip or you end up with like your hand kind of off to the side. And I'm sitting here going, I want some way to like have a full hand grip yeah. on the front of this. Thing. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have a good place to put my hand. Like my hand was sitting here like, what do I do? What do I do here? Um, cause I didn't like the way, and, and the way I had solved this before on the other, so I had done another Raven as a primary and, um, I can send you the link to it so you can pull it up. Um, I think, um, the way I solved it on that one is I used, because the Raven overall is so short, I used a, um, I used a, a foregrip that I made so that my hand had somewhere to, to sit. But I knew that this blaster was a lot longer and I didn't want to put a foregrip because my hand would then go too far forward. Yeah. And and then I'd have like these weird lines that, that wouldn't work very well. And, it, you know, like I didn't want to put a foregrip here. And and so, you know, I, I had this idea, like I was like, I didn't want to put a foregrip on it because ah. it just, it wouldn't work right with the lines of the blaster and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, okay, well, what could I do here? And I said, well, if I had a piece that came down and I did like a hand guard, that would work because then your hand when you're fighting, you know, when you've got this thing shouldered, your hand just naturally falls to the front of the blaster, but you've got a little bit of extra room for your, for, you know, so your front two fingers kind of rest on where the Raven expects you to rest with the little triangle bits on the, the angled kind of angled front part Yeah, where you expect, but then you've got this hand guard for your ring and pinky finger to wrap around and rest on and, and you've got purchase so you don't feel like the bottom part because the problem is with the raven is either you're like wrapping your mitts around the entire front of the right it's kind of like it's kind of like when you've got an alpha trooper right some people grab the alpha trooper and they like grab it like in a in a c claw yeah and they wrap their hand around the side of the alpha trooper and some people like grip it like a shotgun grip right and like yeah like you've got one of two ways of doing it similar with a raven you've got one of two ways of either you let your fingers wrap around the front and you you let two of your fingers kind of dangle in space because no one has hands that small <laughs> or you end up like just grabbing the entire front end of the blaster with your hand and just being like this is going here <laughs> <laughs> you know like um and i didn't want that so i was like okay well well i'm gonna put a handguard on it and so i started tinkering around with 
oh, I've got this hyperfire that I've cut up. Um, the reason I didn't go with the hyperfire is I think it was a little bit too wide. I, I was worried that I would have trouble resolving the width between the hyperfire handguard, and I didn't want to have to deal with the seam of where the rev trigger was, or the, the mag release from the hyperfire was. Ah, good point. So I ended up ditching, the, even though I really liked the line of it and I liked the angles yeah. on the front, like I really liked that line that looked really cool. And I was like, oh, that would be great. Um, uh, and what I ended up going with was a cyclone shock um, and a very cut down cyclone shock at that, but a cyclone yeah. shock nonetheless, um, which it just, it fit better. It was thinner. It's very, the, the cyclone shock handguard is actually really, really thin. Really sleek. Um, so it, it fit really well um, and it, and it served the same purpose. Um, the cyclone shock, I actually cut into, you can see one, one picture where I'm, where I'm, positioning it and what i ended up doing is i ended up positioning it roughly like that and then i ended up trimming off that tail end that comes and that comes around the handle of the raven and i cut it there and then folded it back in so that you get you still get the whole handle um but part of it is cut and then folded so that it can make that turn yeah at the bottom of the at the bottom of the uh of the the handle um there's also at this point where um, I almost made a very bad decision, and I'm glad <laughs> I did. Um, at this point, I was very frustrated by the limited availability of what cages were available to the Raven. Um, I thought, well, okay, if I could get a DRS cage, that'd be fine, but DRS cages for Ravens like don't exist. Yeah. And DRS is, you know, like, Awesome cage. I have a DRS cage in Eidolon. It's fantastic. I love it. If I could get a DRS cage for Hugin's Claw, I'd consider getting one and spending the money to get one. Um, or if uh, um, Heston Systems comes out with a, a Raven cage, Ooh, definitely would right. consider putting an aluminum cage in there. But like, yeah, you pretty much are like, well, OFP kind of makes a Raven cage, but it doesn't really work. And I don't think Containment Crew had a raven cage out at this point or it was like brand new and i didn't know about it mm -hmm. and at this point the eclipse cage had just come out and i was like oh it'd be awesome to have an eclipse cage and do brushless like i, I had this idea that i wanted to put brushless in here from the beginning so that i could make it and more legal or super side like if i went to a super stock where oh, i yeah. could have this thing slinging you know 180 yeah, yeah. 190 or if i wanted to go to nds like and war i just you know ramp it right down to 125 no mm -hmm. big deal um and I almost put an eclipse cage in this thing. And I almost <laughs> cut apart the Raven battery or the Raven motor cage and like tried to implant a strife motor cage. Um, and thank God I didn't line it, aligning it. What killed it was I was like, there's no way for me to guarantee that this alignment will work. Yeah. And, and if the alignment's off, it's going to be awful. So I scrapped that idea. Whew. Thankfully. Close call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I found a, a nice low profile, um, 180 cover. So at this point, I went, okay, well, I'm going to do brushless, but I'm going to put a 180 motor cover on it. So if brushless doesn't pan out, I can always do 180. Yeah. Um, turns out, turns out this co cover is not the greatest. Like it, it is a 180 cover. There is clearance for 180 motors in terms of height, but because it dips in the middle, it's hard to connect them. Oh. Um, so I don't like this battery cover all that much, or this motor cover all that much from a functional standpoint. But now that it's running Fangry Vamps that are 130 size motors running on 2S and they produce more than enough torque because I'm not doing a high crush cage in this, like, yeah. eh, whatever. <laughs> um, it looks okay. It looks fine. I mean, I like the look of it. That's why I got it. Is I was like, oh, that looks cool. That'll that'll definitely work. So, meh. Um, then moving on, I did a, I was actually astounded. This is, this is again, just a sheet of ABS that I cut the size. And it fit perfectly into the void left by the side tack rail of the Raven. I'm, I was astounded. <laughs> it's like the exact right thickness. I, I, I don't, yeah. <laughs> I was expecting to like put one in and then have to like sand it down and like it yeah. might be weighty. And I was like, nope, perfect. I, 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 that's not even Debcon and I super glued that in. Cause I was like, there's no way this is going oh, anywhere. Nice. Uh, 
Yep. So moving on, um, this is this here. You can see where the the cyclone shock handle gets fully welded in, and you can see how I cut it and and re and folded the cyclone shock handle around the Raven handle. Um, things are really starting to solidify here. Got all of this, all of the Centurion pieces glued in and cut and glued in. Um, all of the Raven and all of the Zeus work is done. All of the back end is done. Um, one, the one part that was still glaring that was a problem was where the Nerf logo is. I didn't like how there was this abrupt transition between the Zeus back end and the and the Raven. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, I wanted to try and make it so that there were no abrupt transitions. So I started sifting through my parts bin and ended up finding a, a piece of a long shot front gun um, that fit in well. And I liked the, the fact that the line kind of starts to come up so that it kind of pulls in the line of, of the, uh, it pulls in the line of things coming up for the motor cage. And so it kind of pushes up into the motor cage as it will, like that line, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, starts, you start to see, okay, well, the, the Raven comes up into the motor cage and now we have this line from the piece coming back from the Zeus also pushing up into the motor cage, the motor housing of the yeah. Raven. Yeah, so it's um, a transition. Yeah, and it's also at this point that uh, I do gain a piece of a strife because uh, <laughs> I had the strife sitting there and I was like, oh, well, I could put the, I mean, I'm, I might not use the strife motor cage, but man, that strife piece looks really great on top there to, to make it so that it, there isn't just this like, you know, block of motor. There, it's what, what I believe most people when they're modding a Raven, they call it the motor, the pylon, it's the motor pylon. Oh, it's like yeah, in the yeah. middle of the black. Yeah. And most people, when they gut a Raven, that part isn't used. And so people either, cut it away or shove a voltmeter in it or yeah. do something with it. Um, I had to keep it because it's one of my motors. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to do something with this like blocky thing that stuck out like a sore thumb. And what I ended up doing is cutting it down to the very minimum I could that would still allow motor clearance. And then I put the top part of the strife motor housing on top of it. Which and is just like super, there again, just super subtle, but it just makes a, a heck of a difference. And again, yeah. one of those pieces that once it's painted, you, you look at it and you're like, I think I recognize that, but you, you don't pick it out and be like, oh yeah, that's totally a strife thingy. It's like, yeah, just, just like the perfect piece for that purpose, for that spot. It, it worked out really well. Yep. Um, other than that, I think we're actually, oh, and then there was one more. I didn't like where the transition between um, the panel on the side from the Centurion just kind of had this like blank spot. It's at this point on the build where I've got so many other blasters tacked on here <laughs> that like any part of this blaster that isn't covered in in some other part of another blaster looks out of place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, now that I've covered 80% of it, I have to cover 15% more so that the 5% looks intentional and it's not just like laziness, mm -hmm. right? Like, <laughs> so I ended up using a piece of a rapid strike um, to bridge that gap, cut it down and, and fit it in there. Um, and at that point, I think that finishes every single, um, every single one of the, uh, every single one of the blasters that went into this. Um, there are, I believe 10 of them. Oh yeah. Here, uh, here we are. Everything's all accounted for. Everybody's all yep. labeled. Yep. So we've got Zeus, Rapid Strike, Hyperfire, Rough Cut, Long Shot, uh, Strife, more Hyperfire, Alpha Hawk, Cyclone Shock, and obviously a Raven. And then on the other side, um, I think that I think that's all of the blasters. Because on the other side, there's uh, oh, and Centurion. Because um, on the other side, there's more Centurion, and then everything else is just a mirror. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, yep. More more of everything. On the other side, but it's yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten pieces, yeah, because there's two pieces of hyperfire. So there are ten blasters in Hugan's Claw. Ten blasters died for Hugan's Claw in some some regard. Ah, they're all living in harmony, it looks like. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm pleased with how it came out. And then, mm-hmm. and then I went, oh, you know what? You know, there was um, at this point, I think somebody on Reddit, I forget who, put in the thing um, of, uh, you know, they had like carbon fiber panel on the side, and I was like, oh, that looks really cool. And so I ordered some carbon fiber panel and cut it in and and you know set it up. Oh, so that's actual um, pan- okay for when uh, when I was yep. when I saw it before, I thought that was just some of that vinyl. Nope, that is decal type that is stuff. Actual that... carbon fiber. Oh, that that's cool. Super thin, super thin carbon fiber sheet. Yeah. Cut to size. Yep. Slick. Cut it on a Dremel. Um, wear a safety mask. Mm-hmm. You, want, you do not want to breathe carbon fiber dust. Um, it's like fiberglass. Mm-hmm. It gets into your skin and it itches like hell, and it's it bad for your lungs. Don't don't breathe it. Do it outside in a well ventilated area. Wear wear proper, you know, at the very least, wear like one of those cheapo dust masks. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, you got to have a flared magwell because tactics and got to operate. Um, so what this is is this is actually a black steel props uh, rapid strike uh, flared magwell that I had to doctor extensively with my Dremel. <laughs> Um, the, the rapid strike magwell is much wider than the strike magwell by design. And uh-huh. so I started with that because it's just wider because the rapid strike's a wider opening than the strife. Um, mm, gotcha. Gotcha. And then, and then kind of doctored it a bit with a Dremel until it fit the way I wanted it to. Um, I probably could have done a slightly better job with it, but it all came out in the wash when I, you know, put in um, all of the, uh, epoxy putty and everything yeah other than that um one of the things that's becoming standard for most of my blasters is an etched nameplate out of aluminum so that's me test fitting you know cutting down sanding test fitting the plate for the aluminum um we'll get more to that there's a there's a shot of it etched or i'll explain that in a minute um the front part i closed up just again with abs sheet you take the two factory edges and butt them up and then and then cut the edges around and so that you've got that that's the key to getting good seams when you have to do abs sheet to make a seam is you want to get two you know two really clean edges um facing each other so i used the factory cut edge it's yeah. super straight and cut the two pieces and then butted them up and then cut them to size facing those two factory edges together so mm-hmm. i made sure that i got at best to seem as possible and you're never going to get a perfect seam when you're making your own panel neat there that's one of the reasons like i didn't do a hyper fire handle is because i knew that i have that seam there that would be hard to make look good uh-huh. um so you just, yeah that's probably that's one of the f- big manufactured seams where i had to make the seam on the front there and it, it came out okay um partially because there's just a you know, a, a muzzle sticking out of the front. So most people don't notice the seam. They look at the muzzle and go, oh, are those clear parts? So yeah. distract the distract the uh, questions. <laughs> um, other than that, then we then we get into the actual etching. So the etching you can actually do in your in your kitchen. Um, oh wow. you can you can do that in your kitchen. It's not hard. Um, you use uh, vinegar with salt in it and then you you uh, run current through it from like AA batteries. I just use three AA batteries. Um, you essentially, the, the hardest thing you need is a, is a resist. So you can use cut vinyl, um, which you can get off Etsy. There's Etsy sellers that will sell you cut vinyl mm, or yeah. if you have like a maker space, they might have a vinyl cutter. Yeah. But you, you cut the vinyl, you peel it away, whatever is exposed is gonna get etched. Mm-hmm. You run, current runs from positive to negative. So you attach the positive lead to your material that you want to etch, oh. to attach the negative lead to a, a scrap of the same material uh, in the same tank of vinegar, oh. or like thing of vinegar, and you attach the the power to the positive and negative. And you can actually see it in one of the photos. The the Raven. I use actually I actually use a Raven magazine battery tray to run three double A's, and you just attach it tape it up with electrical tape to make sure it doesn't, you know, short or anything like that. And then you just dunk it in and it will etch it with the power of electricity and, and science. Cool. 
Um, so you can, yeah, you can look up tutorials on YouTube. They're all over the place. You can also use a benchtop power supply if you got one of those kicking mm -hmm. around. You need a benchtop power supply instead of batteries. But then I think I left that into etch for like two hours on and off, you know, checking it every 10 minutes or so yeah. until it got the depth I wanted and then take it out, unmask it, polish it up with some quad zero steel wool. Um, and then next photo is all of the, uh, so at this point it's starting to come along with like epoxy putty and everything. And then there is all of the, uh, the many, many coats of spot putty that went into the blaster. Yeah. Many, many coats of spot putty. And then, uh, finally, once we get all the way up to 600 grit sand, uh, wet sand, is what I go to because of the paint that I use mm -hmm. shows 220 grit lines. So I have to go up to 600 because it goes on super thin um, and really nice and smooth. But uh, I use spastics paints. So it's a gloss back blacker or gloss back black backing coat. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Um, do two or three coats of that until it's all done. And then uh, it actually gets a, I use Ultimate Mirror Chrome, also by Spastics, as the metallic mid coat. That gives it the, the metallic shade. And then uh, I want to say five coats of the candy red. And then uh, the gray color is a Rust-Oleum gunmetal gray. You know, let it dry, mask it off, paint it like you do. And then it's a 2K, a little bit of, a little bit of silver dry brushing and then 2K clear coat. Oh, with uh, white white details, just white acrylic for all the detail paint. It was actually kind of unfortunate. I, I put on like five coats of acrylic to try and cover the red. And then when I put down the 2K clear, it emulsified it a little bit. So it kind of turned a little pink. Ah. But it looks good. Mm -hmm. So I just say it looks like bloodstained claws. And it's totally <laughs> intentional. Just fake it till you make it. There you go. 